Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm gonna do something that's a little different. Normally I do um, beginner lessons, but today I'm going to work on something that's a little bit more advanced. So if you feel that that's your, um, where you're at, this class will be perfect for you. Um, I'm going to be uh, painting this little Shih Tzu that was my daughter's dog and sadly she her name was Miso and she passed away so I wanted to do a painting for her and I thought why not make this into a lesson as well. So um, whenever I wanna do something like this, like a pet and I want it to look just like the pet, I will do a photocopy and then I will use um, graphite paper to transfer just the main areas of everything. So as you can see, I have a sketch that is um, not super clear, but clear enough for me to see. And um, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just gonna start with the background first, which is all of this area in through here. And then um, there's a little bit down here, but I think I'll wait on that because it looks like it's a little piece of a bench that's right there. So what I wanna start off by doing first is wetting the area around my little dog. And um, I am being careful to uh, not get any water on her, on the dog or it will bleed into it. And I kinda wanna keep that clear. So, I'm just gonna continue to wet this area. I'm not using a big brush because it's a small area. So I'm just going to Continue to wet it. And we're gonna work in different um, levels. So after I get done with the background, I will um, let that dry really well before I move on to the next part because I don't want to see them blend into each other. So <clears throat> I'm gonna change things up. It, it definitely has a, a green background has lots of tall grasses, but um, and I am still going to do green, but I'm gonna start off with first just a sap green, and I kinda want this to be strong, so I am putting a lot of color down, and we'll just let that bleed into the areas that I've wet. And we're gonna be painting some succulents. And I'm not gonna get so much into the details of the succulents because I don't want that to take away from the, um, the puppy. So um, I'm gonna just do it a little bit more on the soft side. I'm just gonna kind of gently go around my dog. I did tape this, although I used scotch tape this time, and it's not really staying. It's okay, because I'll probably go ahead and, and cut it off anyway. So, man, I'll probably buy a mat for it as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take, while it's wet, take a little of this uh, Prussian blue, and I'm gonna hit it in a few places just to give it some depth. Just let this bleed into the other color. I'm just sort of randomly picking areas that I want it to be deeper. I want it really deep in here because this is behind her. I just absolutely love Prussian blue. It has such a pretty, dark, a uh, nice tone to it. Okay, so we will let this dry really well before we move on to our next level. And um, normally I do like to get the dog out of the way and just, you know, get that done. But um, this time I do want to 
I do want to have the background done first because when I finish the dog, I want hairs to be, I'm going to use uh, white acrylic paint to do the hair because she has a lot of these little fine hair pieces um, through the background. So because of that, it's best to do the background first. So the next part we will do, oh, I do need to do this right here. I just noticed that. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna dip this in a little bit of the, um, I didn't even wet that area. So I'm gonna dip it into the sap green and just put it on straight because this is really, really dark in here. Keeping in mind, I'm trying to get a little bit of the fur effect by using the point of my brush. Actually, right now I'm using this silver black velvet uh, round and it is a number eight. So we'll just go ahead and there's a little piece of bench right here that I want to um, do that will be right here. So this part that I'm working on right now is the dark area in here. And right now on my brush, it already had some of the Prussian blue. I left it on my brush and now I'm going to continue to just um, you do that with the sap green to do this little part back here. Sometimes when we're, you know, working with watercolor, it's easy to miss an area because everything is white. So I think that's pretty good because there's a succulent that comes in over here and almost um, is it is in front of her actually. So I'll go ahead and let's see. Yeah, I think this is a good place to let this dry now. And that's that. So I'm gonna, um, if you have, if it's a sunny day and you wanna put it outside, you can. Or I'm putting a little bit more of the blue in here just to really darken this up. So, uh, and I, I wanna work with it while it's still wet. So I think that's pretty good. Let's just stop there and um, come back after it's dry. Okay, I'm back and my painting uh, dried outside. And I really like the softness of what happened here. So I am just going to leave it. Um, by the way, I am using 300 pound cold press watercolor paper. And the reason why is... Um, when I go to do uh, something that's a special gift for somebody, I will up the level of uh, watercolor paper and I just find that it just, it's very stiff. It's very thick and very stiff and it's great for doing um, portraits, things that are going to go inside of a frame. So it just, for me, I just want to go up a level if it's a gift for somebody. So um, I'm going to go ahead and work on the bench that's behind uh, Miso. And there's a piece that's right here, and then there's a piece that comes along in here. So um, I'm just gonna make it simple and just go with Burnt Umber. And on something like this, I'm not going to wet it first. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it in, and then, um, and as you can see, it's a very light beige, but that's what I want because there's lots of light beiges. I'm not even doing this right here, as you can see, but there's lots of a light, burnt umber color and then it gets darker and darker. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in all the areas that are around this succulent. And as you can see, it's, you know, this is not, if you take your time and you're not in a hurry, you will definitely be happy with your results. It's when you feel like you wanna do it in quickly. And you know, I have to, I'm actually a fast painter, so I can do this probably quicker um, than most people. But um, at the same time, you know, you want to take your time when it's a gift for somebody and not feel rushed. If you feel, you know, a little bit tired, then stop and just come back to it later. So I guess this is where her little foot starts right here. So I'll go ahead and come down here and block this in. Mind you, I'm trying to give it, I'm using the point from my brush just to give it a little bit of a, 
uh, fur around her foot and her tummy. And like I said, I didn't wet it first. I think my tape's already coming off, but that's okay. I'm gonna probably put a really pretty gold, um, I'm gonna use gold metallic paint to do a frame, a hand painted frame around that. So I'm not concerned if it bleeds into that. All right, so now that this is wet, I'm gonna go ahead and do some darker areas. I'll come along and do the slats where it is um, at a different time. So now it's really, really, really dark in this area right in here. So what I'm gonna do is take a little Prussian blue and mix it with my burnt umber. And those two colors actually make a really nice black. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dab that in here. And because this is still wet, it will bleed. And that's very shadowed, and that's why I want it to be super, super dark in there. So let's see. If you want your colors to be darker, use less water. And it will, you can see that I just, I just didn't even dip it in the water and it will do very, very nice, deep, rich colors for you. Okay, and the same thing here, I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly hit it in a few areas. Burnt Umber and Prussian Blue just give it some touches of a darker color. But not too much. It's gonna always dry a lot softer in shade, so do keep that in mind. All right, so this is a good place to stop and let this dry. And then we're going to go ahead and actually we can go ahead and do that now. We can go ahead and um, do some of the background of our uh, succulent that's over here. And I think what I'm going to do is just kind of use the same colors. Why not? Because it's very dark in between some of the succulents. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit it in a few places. There's a couple of stems in here. Um, I absolutely love painting succulents. I have painted a lot of succulents, mostly in acrylic. So if you go to my um, uh, website, which is paintingwithvictoria.com. You'll get to see a lot of my uh, artwork in there and I have some succulent paintings that I've done in acrylic that I did um, quite a few years ago, but they are still classic today because everybody loves um, succulents. So let me just go ahead and just get a few more places here. And that just sort of uh, is the background to my succulents. Go ahead and put something in here. All right, I guess that's good enough for now. We'll just let that dry. And um, as it's drying, I guess I could just go ahead and start on some of the succulents, why not? And I do see some areas in my um, picture right here, I actually drop some water on there, so ignore that, but you can see some dark areas in here. So why not just, you know, do it in the same tone? I'm trying not to get too complicated, especially when I'm teaching a lesson. Um, so there's some areas in here that just look like they're really super dark. And um, so we'll just go ahead and do those.
as long as I've got the color made, I might as well take care of those little areas. Let's see, right in here. Right here. These are very small. So that's why I'm saying you want to take your time. Don't ever feel like you should be in a hurry to do um, a watercolor painting. It is a very relaxing medium. So um, I like to just take my time and look at all the areas that need, that need detail. So I think that is good. I kind of want to make sure that these little areas are dry before I get started. So I'm going to take this outside and just let this set for and really like five minutes at the most and um, bring it back in and we'll get started on our succulents. Okay, so um, we're back and um, we're going to concentrate on some of the succulents that are in this and um, when I'm looking at this I'm actually trying to find the lightest color in this first and then I'm going to block it all in so this one as you can see the lightest color is like a really pretty mint green and the lightest color in this is just a very very warm um, I'd say a uh, uh, yellow ochre with a smidge of magenta in it so I'm gonna make a very watered down light color and then I'm gonna block it in in here. And the same thing with here, it's just sort of a, like a celery, light celery color. So let's go ahead and block all these in so I can have that as the lightest shade because you really can't go back and put the light shades in. What you wanna do is apply the darker shades on top until you get to the end. So I'll go ahead and start with, I'll just go ahead and start with this one right here. So um, I'm gonna take um, a little sap green and just really, really water it down. And because it's more of a celery color, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow ochre to that just to lighten it up. So you can see it's kind of a, it looks darker. It's gonna be much lighter when it gets on the paper. So as you can see, it's just a very soft, and I like to call this like a celery color and I'm just going to go over all of it. Just as my background shade. If there was white in the background, I would leave that, but there really isn't any white. So we'll just go ahead and block that in. And as I get to this one right here, this was the one that I said has the lightest shade on it, is what I see at least is a yellow ochre with, and I'm gonna use opera red, which to me is like a magenta. Do you see how pretty it just kind of makes it very, very, um, I just actually love mixing these two colors together, magenta with yellow ochre. And so I'm just gonna block that in. This is my lightest shade. There we go. And this, this, this is one succulent and then this is a different one. So we'll just keep on, keep on here. Almost done with this one. Is that pretty? already okay and mind you I'm not trying to copy the photograph exactly I can put my own spin on it if I want to it's my painting and I want you to feel the same way if you don't ex like what's in your photograph by all means change it so now the other succulent had more of a blue tone in it see it's a little bit more on the blue side of course than this so I'm going to just just going to keep my sap green but I'm going to add a little bit of let's put some um, like a cerulean blue in it and see how now it's more of a blue green so now I'm just going to block this whole thing in 
And I'm actually going to put burgundy over that, so um, which will cover nicely. So we'll go ahead and keeping in mind the dog is right there um, behind the succulents. So I don't really want to get make I don't want to make sure I don't get any of that mint green on her fur. And I'm carefully going around this one just because I know it's still wet. And of course we're going to stop again and we're going to let this dry. So the one thing I do want to do just for fun is because my succulent right here is very a dark color in there, I'm just going to add a little bit more uh, of the paint. And I'm just going to dab it right here in the center. Just because it's a deeper tone in there. It's not going to make much of a difference, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. All right, so I'm going to let that dry really well, come back, and then we'll do some um, wonderful details in our succulents. So my painting is nice and dry. It's a very sunny day today, so um, it, it's really working for me. As you can see, even my little dark area just sort of bled out softly, and it's, it's very nice. So we're going to work on the details of the succulents. Um, and this could take some time. Um, please bear in mind that, you know, I this is a gift for somebody, so I want to do a really nice job. So um, we'll just go ahead. I'll just go ahead and go at a pace that I feel comfortable with. Um, but feel free if you want to, you know, run it in fast motion. That's fine with me. So um, I'm going to stick it in a little bit of this wine color. And I don't want it to be so you know, red. So I'm actually mixing it in my green solution that I had. Just, and when you put green and red together, it really, um, it does, um, what do I want to say? It neutralizes it. So um, I'm actually using the same brush. I know I should go to a smaller one, but I'm just always comfortable one with this brush because it has such a sharp point that I can get a lot of detail. And this is the kind of uh, succulent that has a little burgundy tips on, on the tip of each one. And I don't know how well you can see that, but right over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, you know, without getting too much into crazy detail, it just kind of hit the top of each one. And, and I did, pretty much sketch out almost all the leaves. But, and I'm not really worried also about, oh, this has to, I hate it when people, you know, want their paintings to look like a, a photograph. And that's not what it should look like. It should look like a painting. So I'm not gonna worry too much about exact uh, of what I'm seeing in my photograph. As you can see, I'm just hitting it in a few places and then I'm gonna darken the crevices with a richer green color. So this is just wine mixed with my sap green and um, my, uh, let's see, oh, Prussian blue, that's what I used. So, and as you can see, it's just, it's just a little jumble of uh, succulents. So again, I'm not looking for, for perfection in it because it, even in the photograph, it's pretty rough. So let's see. In some places, if, if I wanted to, I could just put the burgundy color and that would be fine too because there's in some places of the succulents, it's pretty um, dominant. So, but I'm just gonna go ahead and run it along the tops. And uh, there's not that many, but this is probably out of all the succulents, the the busiest one, of course. This brush just works great for doing detail. Even though it's a larger brush, it has a wonderful point to it. So, just sort of outlining the top of each petal. Oh, 
Okay, we're getting close to the bottom. And like I said, this is just to give it the just give it the illusion that it's um, succulents. All right, that's where I'm going to stop with the burgundy color, and now I'm going to go ahead and go with a darker tone, which will be the sap green and the Prussian blue make a deeper green. And I would definitely want it more blue um, because it's going to be in the shadows. So this is a very warm color and the other one is definitely more, um, this one is more cool. So a little bit more blue in there, water it down. I don't want it to be that dark. So I'll walk, go over here, water it down. And now I'm going to just hit it in a few of the crevices of some of these leaves. And I can always go back and do more shadows as it dries. But for right now, I'm just, like I said, this is just such a tiny little succulent plant in the whole story. And I don't want to bring so much attention to it that um, it takes away from the dog. So we'll just keep going and add that in a few of the, the areas that would be like inside the succulent. Now, if I were to do a feature succulents in my painting, well then I would definitely put more time and more, um, more details. But because this is, um, these are stems right here, so I just decided, ah, let's just go ahead and do those. But um, because this isn't about the succulents, this is just, the succulents are just a background, I'm not going to try to worry about doing so much detail. Sort of dab it here, dab it there, just get it done. Alrighty. So as you can see, it just sort of resembles a some kind of a cactus plant of some kind. And I've left I've kind of covered up a lot of the background color now, which is fine. Oh, this one. All right, there we go. I'm gonna stop there because I could just spend way too much time on this. So the next part of my painting is on here. And it seems to be like a complement color, which uh, which any kind of you know yellow or maize color, it would be a soft lavender color. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use this that I made over here, this neutral color here. And it was the wine with a little sap green in it. And um, I just think it's, it, I think it'd be perfect to do this. Add a little bit of more Prussian blue. There we go. And it's a very, very light tone. Now this is a bigger succulent, so I'm definitely want to make sure that I put a little bit more detail into it. Now this is a process that I do when I want it to blend in, is I'll have a wet, a wet watercolor brush right next to me and I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that right into this one so that it has more of a soft transition. Put a little bit more red in this. I'm gonna add a little bit more wine. And um, this one, I'm just gonna run it along the top here. Wet, have a wet paintbrush on hand. Okay. And now I'm just gonna pick and choose what I want to you know, which leaf I want to do. So I try to do the ones that are in the background first. Wet paintbrush. Just blend that in. 
There we go. And just keep going. I may, after this dries, um, to do, I might just go ahead and come in with another color and let that um, bleed into everything. It just depends if I feel it needs it. But for right now, I'm just, again, just blend it in with a wet brush. Oh, and just go leaf after leaf after leaf. That's all you have to do. I love this technique because it um, it just allows a softness, and what, that's exactly what I want is a softness between these two colors. Also, keeping it um, soft also helps with the um, the softness of the dog, which I want. Let's go ahead and do this right here. Let's see, some of these areas I'm gonna to have to come back to because they are touching each other and I don't want them to bleed into each other. And this is going to dry lighter in shade. They always do. So um, even if it comes on a little bit strong, don't worry. That's going to fade out and dry in a lighter tone. So in a way, this class is about learning how to paint um, an animal, a dog, and how to do succulents. So that's kind of fun that we're able to do two lessons in one lesson. I keep adding the, um, the uh, uh, wine into this because it seems to be getting kind of a mucky, uh, purpley color, and I'm okay with that. But you know if you want to warm it up, but just add a warm color to it. So, uh, let's see. I'm trying to keep the chunky parts of my succulent um, from getting paint on it because, because they stand out. So, So as you can see, I keep switching over from a wet, a wet paintbrush to the paintbrush that has the paint on it. Now some of the warm tones are supposed to continue to show. So as you can see, I'm um, going to leave some of that there and that's where the light is hitting some of these areas. So. That one up there and the other one. It's a little darker here, so I'm going to just Kind of hit that in a few places and then we have this one back here it's pretty much all this color in here okay so 
got this area in here. I'm going to darken this in here. And this is just that same color I'm working with. Same thing, let's see. Right here it could use a little darkening. If it's still wet, it'll kind of bleed into it. But if it doesn't look wet, then I take my brush and just sort of hit it here and just blend it in. And the same thing right here. Looks like it could use a little deepening in there. Because these are complement colors, which means that the opposites on the color wheel, they look really nice together. Okay, it's really super dark right in here. Let that bleed out and right in here okay so we'll just kind of I, I feel like I'm using too much wet on wet right now so we're gonna go ahead and let's see Succulents are funny plants. They really are. They have such uh, interesting shapes to them. I can always come back and play with this. Um, sometimes I just don't know when to stop and then I find that I'm losing the um, losing all of the detail. I won't be able to do the details because I'm losing it. They're all blending into each other. So I'll stop here and let this um, dry really well and work and move on to the, this one right here. Now this one, this succulent also has a lot of this really pretty burgundy tone. So I'm just going to go ahead and take some opera red, which is really pretty pink color. I'm going to add some of this sap green to it to tone it down. See what see what just happened? And it's made it a, still a very pretty color, but not as vibrant. So I'm going to go ahead and just outline a few of these places here. And with the same technique, just blend that in with a little bit of wet, call it done. So I'll come back in with a darker green later and um, hit it in a few places. So the same thing right here, just do the point. Being careful now because at this point it's touching the dog's fur and I don't want it to um, get into the fur. And then my wet brush. Okay, and we just continue as we go around the succulent to make sure that I don't forget any of them. Okay, wet brush, blend it in. This one's really pretty. I always love it when it's the green and red together. Uh, let's see, this one just has a little tiny area. I am looking at my photograph as a reference, but I'm not worried if I don't, if it's not copied exactly, that's just not important. Of course, when I go to do the dog, I definitely want to copy it as ex exactly as close as I can because this is a personal thing and um, my daughter will see that either it does look like her dog or it doesn't. So I wanna make sure that I definitely make that as close as possible. Now this one here, it's back here seems to be all burgundy so there you go you can do that if you want it and actually this one back here does too I'm gonna make it all burgundy color don't 
just go ahead and finish this out and then I'll stop for a second and take a little bit of a break before I dive into the dog. And um, But you see, as all I'm doing, this is so fun, and as, um, as it dries, it just sort of bleeds in so pretty. And after this, you'll probably feel confident enough you know, maybe just play with succulents. You know, just paint those for a while and maybe do some cards. That's, I always say, you know, if you're gonna do it, don't don't worry about doing it on a large scale. Practice it on a small scale. So if you do a card, then, you know, you're only working with a four by six and it's much easier. Almost done with this for this level. And I know for a fact that my daughter loves succulents, which is one of the reasons why when I found this photograph in my computer, I thought, oh, this is the perfect one because I know she loves succulents. And of course she loved, she loves her miso so much. And it's just so sad. Miso was 13 years old and just was fighting a lot of different little illnesses. So um, anyway, she's in heaven right now and uh, living a good doggy life out th up there. Okay, so the rest of, it looks like the rest of the shadings on this are more in the green tone. So I'm just, and then the burgundy, <clears throat> excuse me, is only on the points. <coughs> excuse me, so um, that's what I am going to do right now is just let this, Stop here. Just got a few more to go. Let's see. Right here is, looks like it's all burgundy. Yeah, the rest of it looks like it's all in um, more softer green tones. And we have some dark shadows in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do them now. I'm just gonna add more green to it. And that makes it more of a neutral. So that would go right here. And I gotta be careful, I don't wanna touch this or it's gonna go into the other areas. So. Sometimes it's just better to take a break, let it dry. Got my wet brush right here. Blend that in. And this area right in here is super dark. So let's go ahead and take care of that. A little bit in here. Like I said, I really want to wait till a lot of this dries. One more over here because this is super dark in here. Why is that? Because it's underneath and that's what happens. The shadows just sort of take over. So the rest of my shadows are more on the green side and I really do want to um, do that correctly. So let me just do this one little spot that I saw. I don't want that to bleed into my other parts. So I'm gonna blend that in. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna work on a few more details on our succulents and then we're gonna to get to the dog. All 
Okay, everybody, I am back and my painting is nice and dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some details using actually some of the colors that I already have here. So this one was the uh, sap green with the Prussian blue. It's a darker, um, uh, it's kind of a mucky dark uh, green. And so I'm gonna use this on my stems in here. We need to get those stems a little bit darker and uh, hit some of these areas in here that we want darker and maybe even just outline a few places as you can see I've got some you know lighter shades but I just kind of want to hit it and just give it that third shade Maybe I'll use it to even outline some of my succulents. It is just a very muted color. Get rid of this white blotch here. And like I said, I'm not trying to get so detailed, but these guys just need a little bit more shadowing. And like I said, it, when you're doing a gift for somebody, you kind of want to go a little bit farther. So I'm just kind of using it to sort of outline some of the pieces. But I, I think I'm just going to, you know, stop there. I don't want to go overboard, but I did want to just sort of darken up some of these areas in here. Okay, so now this one right here, it has a very, very soft, soft green tone in a few places. So Prussian green, I mean Prussian blue and sap green are my go-to for a really pretty blue-green color. But because it's, um, I want it to be super soft, I am going to add a lot of water to this mixture and I just kind of want to hit it in a few places. Let's see. Um, see how it's just sort of soft, soft green color. And I can go ahead and use the method that I like with the uh, blending it with the uh, wet brush and that just gives it a nice soft soft tone isn't that pretty just adding that little bit of green a few places just enough to um, make it look a little bit more like a plant too. Although succulents are definitely in all different types of shades. So I'm going from just a water brush to the brush that has the color. Blend it out. You sort of have to just use your own judgment. What I mean, what I'm doing here is I'm literally just making it up as I go along. But um, because everybody seems to like succulents so much, it is good to know how to paint these so that you can do, like I said, you can do a painting of just succulents or do some you know, really sweet cards, which I've done a lot of, and they're always so nice to give away to people. So I'm just going back and forth. I feel like I'm, this sounds really weird, but I feel like I'm putting makeup on, you know, where you're kind of putting, laying down color and then you're blending it in. You see how pretty that is? Okay. 
because my painting is dry, it doesn't take off any of the color that I put on before that. I'm not going to do all of them. I kind of just want to leave some of it. But some of the areas look like they could just use... It almost works as a good shadow color, too. Shadows should always be in the cool tones. And the part that hits the light should always be, of course, in the warm tones. So... Very good. Now that really dark color that we had made before, which was um, a mixture, I'm just gonna put a little bit more thalo blue. It had that uh, rose red mixed in with the green tone. And um, there's an area right in here that needs to be super dark. And right in here. You'll know it as you, um, as the painting, you know, evolves, you're gonna know, oh, I should I should probably darken this. If it, if it looks like it needs it, it probably does. Um, I'm getting to a point now where I'm ready to move on to the other one, because I could just, you know, you can just keep going and going and and I can always go back and do details if I want to. So it's not like, you know, you can't go back. But for now, I'm just gonna, let me blend this in, and then we're gonna move on to this one right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use the same color because it's a really good color to, you know, darken the whole thing up with, so. Of course, as it gets to the center of our succulent is where it gets a lot darker. So as you can see, we're getting close to that point. We're gonna have to work on little doggy now. And um, I know you're all probably anxious how that's gonna work. Actually, I am too. I have done quite a few uh, paintings on rocks of pets, and I have done one watercolor of a beautiful, beautiful dog, which I will post in this video. Um, Branson, I think his name was, and he was uh, one of those um, husky dogs. I, I'm not really sure. I'll find out exactly what kind of dog that was before I post. But um, anyway, yeah, that's that's it for me. It's not a, it's not something that I I uh, it's not my first choice to paint. But I think it's very important when you're doing a gift for somebody, a painting for somebody that you do something that they want, not something necessarily you want to do. So with that said. I am doing a Shih Tzu because of that. And I think I forgot to do that one with the burgundy tones. So let me see if I can wet this up and give it a little, just forgot all about this back here. It's okay, see what I mean? You can always go back. So, I've got this one to do left, and I'm all done. It's almost like a paint by numbers without having the numbers in front of you. You're just, you know, looking and going, okay, this needs to be done, that needs to be done. So, um... I think that's a really good place to stop. Like I said, I could keep seeing things that need to get done, but I could be working on this all day. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our dog. Now, 
Misa doesn't have a whole lot of color to her. She has a lot of uh, neutral tones. Um, I see burnt umber, and then this is almost black, but not quite black. It's like, like a charcoal color. So what I'm gonna try to do right now first is just lay down some soft tones of where I see where her, her fur changes colors. So let me just go ahead and wipe this off. I love these blue industrial paper towels. They are excellent for um, cleaning and using in watercolor because it's like a rag. You can even wet it and wring it out and dry it. And there you have it. So I'm gonna use that spot right there and just start with burnt umber. I mean, because there is a lot of burnt umber on her. So let's go ahead and um, start with, I'll start with her ears and the ears are pretty dark. And they're so dark that I'm gonna put some of this Prussian blue in with my burnt umber. I'm not even going to um, uh, um, wet it first. I'm just gonna apply it on there. And this whole part of the ear is dark. And I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that like that um, because I definitely need to have the strokes in there and go ahead and do the other ear. And this is where the little tiny hairs around her face are in front of the ear. It looks like she was definitely just got groomed And I'm using this, because it has this wonderful point, I'm using that to my advantage and just brushing up because that's the next level of color that's in her ear is um, a softer burnt umber. And this is definitely gonna get darker. This is the first level here. She has a little uh, area in here. Let me water that down a little bit so it's not so strong, and underneath her chin in here. And I'm gonna use my method of blending that in. And she has an area above her eye. This area above her eye is a little bit warmer. So I think I'm gonna add a tiny bit of yellow ochre to that, just to warm that up. Just a smidge now, okay? and put that in her little eye area here. Now while this is wet, I have to take advantage of it and blend this out. And I'm not, I think that I should have put a tiny bit of burnt sienna in that. She needed to be a little bit warmer. So burnt sienna will warm that up a little bit and just stick that in here. And uh, there's a tiny bit in here. Wet brush. Okay, let's go ahead and take that nice warm color and put some over here next to her eye over here. She has quite a bit of white on her, so I have to be very careful not to um, take away from that. And then she has this little spot right here that has uh, actually several shades of uh, brown, but I'm gonna go ahead and just apply it on. We can always add more. And 
it again. I'm gonna bleed, let that bleed a little. Wet brush. I notice that there's some little bit of dark tones in that, so I'm gonna dab that on while it's wet. Okay, so now all the other shadows of her hair are a little bit more on the gray side. So in order to make that look a little bit more on the gray tone, I have to add some Prussian blue to it. And um, we're gonna just dab that on in here. Let that blend. And it's definitely under her neck. She's got a little collar on, which I don't want to forget because it might have been a collar that um, Stacy had bought for her. So blend that out. And that little dark area that's right underneath her chin. Since I don't want it to dry like it's got, you know, definite shapes, I have to let that blend in softly. So you can see I'm kind of just going back and forth and back and forth with my colors. She's got a definitely a strong, oops, I want to get rid of that gold color because I want it to be more on the gray side. A little burnt umber, wet it down, there we go, it's more on the gray side. So I want to get that underneath her nose. I think the key to um, doggy portraits, because I've actually watched a lot of YouTube videos on, on dog portraits and stuff, is, you know, make sure you really get the features that are, you know, uh, the strongest on the, on the animal. And, excuse me. And uh, she's got this funny little smile going on right here. It's just so cute. Definitely dark fur right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let's go ahead and she's got some dark areas around her nose. Just a few though. Tap that in. And then there's this crease in here. And I'm glad that paint is still wet because it's blending in nicely. Now, one thing I have known about when I'm doing a doggy pet that doesn't really come alive until I get those eyes going. So I'm definitely gonna wanna get her eyes going at some point so that we don't look like we're looking at a, a creepy looking little doggy here so a little burnt umber and this is a little this is darker in here and bear in mind I know I say this a lot but it's true it's gonna dry lighter so uh, don't worry about if you put it on and it seems a little strong it will dry a lot lot lighter Oh, this might be a, 
area that I might have to just let this dry because I can see where um, I could get myself into trouble if I don't. Sometimes it's just best to let it dry so you don't keep applying um, wet paint on wet paint. Let's just go ahead and do a few areas in here. Luckily, this dog has a lot of white, so I don't have to worry about so much color. Wet, wet paintbrush, just blending it out. All right. I think this is a place that I want to, oh, you know what, I know, I see something else I need to do. Right here where her little leg is, there's some hair that's right here. And I would never want to do her nose until um, I get more done because that definitely has to be full straight paint. We don't want to see um, uh, the nose blend into the other areas of the dog. So you have to be super, super careful. All right, I'm going to let this dry and come back and then we'll work on it some more. Alrighty, so it's nice and dry and I'm ready to do some details. And I think what I'm going to start with first, just so it dries as I'm working on the rest of the painting, is the eyes and the nose. Yay! And um, of course, like I said, I don't normally use black paint. I use burnt umber and I'll use Prussian blue. And between the two, it makes a wonderful black color. If I feel like it's too blue, I add a little bit more burnt umber till I get this nice dark black color. And of course, this one I'm not gonna use a lot of water because um, I don't want it to be super wet. So I'm just gonna go ahead, and there is the whites of her eyes, but I'm gonna go ahead and carefully, carefully, there's some fur that's going There's a little sparkle in her eye that I want to leave. Some people go back with um, with uh, white paint and do that, and you can do that if you want to. But I am going to go ahead and just leave that sparkle there. Okay, there's one eye. And the other eye has two little sparkles in it. Let's see. First it has this... Almost looks like she has eyeliner on. But what I'd like to do is paint around first the uh, little sparkly areas of her eye. And then I'll fill it in. Now on this eye, she doesn't really have much of the white of her eye because of the angle that she's at. So... I know that uh, Shih Tzus tend to have really, really long eyelashes. So we will definitely try to get those in as well. She has this hair that kind of comes up into her eye as well. All right. There is where I'm going to stop. Now I am going to use a more watered down version of this so it's more of a charcoal color to paint in her nose because there's a reason why. I don't want it to be solid black. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and block the whole thing in and then do the details after it dries. And it has this, she has a lot of darkness in here underneath her nose with uh, dark hair. 
So I'm going to go ahead and paint that in as well with the charcoal color. And then her little smile. I'm telling you, it really looks like she's smiling in this photograph. Okay, so I'm going to take my wet brush. I want to blend this out. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to start with this very dark color. I'm going to go ahead and do the inside of her ears. Not all of it because it's not all this color. Brush it upwards. And then I'll do the other side. This side blended really nice. I love this little furry effect it made all on its own. Keeping in mind that, like I said, it's not so, so important to um, think that you have to make your painting look like a photograph. We want it to look like a painting in the end. So I'm using this very fine paintbrush to get that really nice hair effect because she does have lighter hair that's going over this part right here. And uh, let's go ahead and darken that in here, darken that in here. All right. I don't see any other black areas on her face. I see some more gray areas, which I'm gonna concentrate on right here. And I did zoom in the camera a little bit more since we are working with details. It's just so funny when you're trying to capture these little parts of per the personality of the animal. Okay, and I'm gonna use this soft gray color. It's the same color, but just more watered down and hit it in a few areas here just to kind of see she's got Just looking at the photograph now and really trying to just imitate all of, think of it as like a color by number, okay? That's probably the best way where you can sort of see what what color needs to go where and, and why because and that's all I'm doing right now. What this area... And I'm going to put a little bit right in here in the crevice. She definitely has some, I'm going to mix this, a very, very even lighter version of that. She has some areas of, that need to be more burnt umber. Okay. She has some areas in here that are seem to be darker. go. It's exactly what I wanted to do. And now we're going to move down to her little foot here. I'll blend that out a little bit so it's not so stark. I'm 
use that same soft burnt umber to darken this area in here. It's really starting to take shape, isn't it? Burnt umber goes a long way. It's just very important that I, I don't want any sharp edges, so I'm trying to keep this as soft as possible. I do know that, you know, this is a little female dog, so I want to keep her features soft. Just use this to kind of outline a few areas. See, I'm doing just a few hair lot, hair areas here. Still keeping in mind, constantly keeping in mind, I want this to look like a painting. I don't want to um, beat myself up over here. dark areas in here around her eyes. I will probably come back in with some white on a few of those places just to kind of wake them up a little bit. Give, give her some give her some highlights. She's a girl. But it's definitely looking more like me so for sure. I'm going to go ahead and give her some hairs here. I am, I'm definitely feeling like she's definitely coming along quite nicely. I just love these little hairs right here that are around her eyes. It always kind of bothered me to see those, but they were always there. And I guess she was just used to it. Okay, let's just do a few details around her mouth. burnt sienna to that just to warm it up. You can see how that warmed it up. And uh, Getting close to where I just feel like I don't want to do too much to really liking that. So since this nose is probably dry, it is, I'm gonna take my black now, which was the burnt umber and a little Prussian blue. I really wanna highlight the area of her nose. She had a line right in there and then this little area in here. Because the nose is the nose is so black. There you go. Um, let's see. I'm gonna take a little of that and just sort of highlight around her eye here. It just needs a little bit of yeah. That's what I want to do. Just darken that a little and then right in here.
Okay. You just have to kind of keep, like I said, just like everything else, you just want to keep looking at it and see if it needs, you know, highlights here, highlights there. Like I said, this is definitely more of a um, advanced class for the person that wants to push themselves. And anytime you're doing an animal, you're definitely going to push yourself. It's not because if it doesn't look right, it doesn't look right, right? So we don't want to we don't want to do something that is too difficult for us at first. But it definitely looks like miso. I think, and not only because I know the dog and I know, you know, what she looks like. So. All right. And while I've got this dark color, I'm going to go ahead and do a few details on my, my bench here, which has this line right here. And it has the slats. go and there's one right here so the ones that are here are so dark but I'm gonna go ahead and do them anyway there we go all right so she has a very dark black collar And there's some fur going around in a few areas, so I almost have to, like, uh, paint in, like, fur that's going through there. So. Tap that in with some more paint, just so it really looks like it's... And then, I'm not sure if I really like that flap that's in her. So this is one of those times that you can go ahead and decide do you want to do that or you don't want to do it. And I don't really want to do that flap, so I'm not even going to put it on there. This is your painting and you can decide whether you want it or not. So I'm not going to do it. So there we go. All right. So her, her definitely her nose is done and I'm going to put a little bit of darkness in here and a little crevice in here. And it's a little bit darker in here. She's got that tiny little uh, upper lip that's poking out there. So now the rest of this painting will be touches of acrylic um, white paint that I will put some soft, soft strokes, um, maybe some additional hairs, especially like, you know, the ones that are right here, this one that comes over here. So this is where... Um, we, I want to let this dry a little bit and make sure that um, it's ready for that phase. Um, I'm really super happy so far with the way it's it's come out. I'm just gonna, I know that she had like, these little spotty areas in her fur here. I'm darken this up a little bit. So we're gonna come back and do those little white hairs, and then we're gonna call this done. And the reason is, is I could definitely. Um, 
I could definitely do some more details on the succulents, but I'm not sure that that's necessary for the class because that's something that's, you know, I personally want to do. So if you feel that, hey, you know, I like your succulents just the way they are, let's just leave them for now. And if I want to touch them up, I'll just touch it up later. So I'm going to just darken this in a few places here. Give her foot a little bit more shadows. But yeah, Misa looks like she's pr looking pretty good here. And it's a good time to stop. So I'm going to let this dry. And... Um, and then we'll come back and do some white details and call it done. Okay, I'm back. The painting is nice and dry. And um, we're just going to do a few areas of hair um, without getting too crazy. Um, let's go ahead and take some, um, let me find a brush that I can use to scoop some out. I've just got some acrylic paint, white acrylic paint, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, it's such a small area that we're doing with acrylic paint. I'm not going to tell you that there's a certain kind of acrylic paint you should buy. Um, any acrylic paint will do and um, I'm just going to go ahead and take I normally don't like to use my watercolor brushes on um, my acrylic paint but I'll clean it out really really good when I'm done I already have my white paint here and I don't want to use it straight because when you use straight acrylic paint it is definitely very thick and it won't glide so you want to make sure you always have it um, somewhat you know thick uh, watered down. The consistency, I would say practice on, you know, a part of your painting to see does it glide. If it glides, then you have enough water on it. If it doesn't, if it seems like it just kind of skips over it, you need to add some more. So we'll start with the top and work our way down. And um, I'm going to go ahead and, and she needs those little tiny hairs that are just sort of poking up above what hair she does have that's showing on the painting. And it's not even, it'll sh it's just barely, barely showing as you can see. We need to do that if we want her to look a little bit more realistic, just a little bit. See how I'm just coming across here and just giving her those little fine hairs. Just like that. I'm gonna go along the top here. If it's too watered down, you're, it's not gonna show as well. So that's another clue that you need to maybe add more paint. I hope my hands are not covering up what I'm doing. I have a feeling they are. But we'll just go ahead and keep going because I can't do anything about the angle that I'm at right now. And you see how it's just giving her a little bit more of a of a furry look. And we'll just do it in a few places coming down here just to highlight. I love this part because this is the part that tells me I'm almost done. So I love this part. And she's got these really long ones that come over her eyes all the way down. And then these above her eyes, there's some right here around her nose. You see how that just sort of highlights a few places? So, like I said, it's always, it can be the scariest part and my favorite part of the painting. And so let's just go ahead and give her some around her face here, just there. Also, it's kind of highlighting her where the light is hitting her fur as well.
And we're going to do a few under her chin. Maybe just do this one right here. Yeah. Wow, this is really just get bringing her to life. She's got a, fun, a couple of little funny ones right underneath her chin, which I know that her mommy will probably remember. Like I said, I want to kind of capture as much as I can. And since the hairs are dark down here, I'm kind of, I watered down the paint a little bit so that it's not so there. Round her ears. Oh, Miso, you're looking so cute. I do a lot of these pet portraits on mostly rocks for people, and um, <clears throat> it's very sad when I know that a lot of the, the portraits I do are for dogs that have, uh, you know, passed away, and this is in, you know, memory of them. They want to, you know, have something that they can look at that be, that's you, you know that's different and um, but at the same time I know that it's important that I capture the true personality of the, the their pet I've done some cats too and I even did um, a bird a parakeet so I'm just looking at the hair that's on her um, in the photograph and then just trying to capture that so and down here she's got a few little areas that I want to just point out that it's her little feet but basically um, this is coming to a close um, I may go in and do some more. I may not. I don't know. I just know that, um, no, I forgot her eye right here. I don't want to overdo it. You know, I want to make sure that I, you got to know when to stop. You know, that's, that is, everybody always says that to me. You know, how do you know when you're done? And I said, I don't think you ever really know when you're done with a painting. You just, at some point, have to put the brush down and sign it, which please don't forget to sign your paintings. So I'm going to stop here as when I take off the tape on this, let's see, it will leave me somewhat of a border of where the paint didn't hit, but I do know for a fact that it did bleed in a few places. So what I'm going to do is hand paint with gold metallic paint and I'll just show you a photograph at the end of this video. So you see this is where it bled. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hand paint gold metallic all the way around. And uh, that way, if she puts it in a frame, you won't see that bleeding at all. And, and then sign the bottom. So this is where we're going to stop for right now. And um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Like I said, it was a little bit more intense and a little definitely a, a, um, harder than what we're used to doing. I am going to probably go back and do uh, just a few more details, but not a whole lot, and then call it done. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and um, please recommend um, my channel to your friends and family. And, you know, some of the easier lessons that I have, um, you know, create a painting party and then put it on the big screen and have some snacks out and press pause when you need to press pause so that everybody can kind of catch up. It'll be a lot of fun and you'll find that, um, you know, everybody will want to come back and do it again. So thank you for watching and check back with my other lessons and God bless you. We will see you and talk and paint again soon. Bye-bye.